Hey guys, welcome back. I'm just sitting at the bar and I'm realizing I am running out of month. It is almost the end of June and we haven't even talked about my gamers education yet. And we are back again this month with a great pick from Mike. And it's probably one of my new favorite games. I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that watches this channel that we love some good survival horror games. And in the month of May, I played my first playthrough of The Last of Us and I thought, let's keep this party going. And you know what? It was really tempting to pick another genre of game. And I know I should, but we got six more months of gamers education left. So on the heels of the announcement, that Resident Evil 4 would be indeed getting a remake. I couldn't let the gamer gods and Capcom gods down. So I'm playing Resident Evil 4. Let's go take a look. Resident Evil is a third person shooter developed and published by Capcom, making its original debut in 2005 on GameCube. This, the sixth installment in the Resident Evil franchise has been ported to many other systems and was also remastered and re-released on PlayStation 4 as well as Xbox One in 2016, which is the version I ultimately decided to play. If you've never played Resident Evil and expect 4 to be exactly like its predecessors, think again. And I mean that in the best way possible. While I really enjoyed 2 and 3, I like the fresh take and new play experience that Resident Evil 4 offered. Say goodbye to Raccoon City, Leon's about to become an international force to be reckoned with. His mission is to travel to a rural European village and rescue Ashley Graham, the president's daughter, who has been kidnapped by a mysterious cult. Let's break the game down a bit further. You know the reason for the mission and you know the end goal. So let's talk about everything else in between. Enter Leon escorted by Cop A and Cop B. Well, that's not actually their names, but like most games, it wouldn't be much of a challenge if the main protagonist was given two extra set of hands. So even if they have names, I didn't see much point in learning them. Thus begins chapter one, dash one. Let me say that again, dash one. And if that's not quite sinking in, let me explain. I do very little research when it comes to starting a new game. I don't want any opinions. I don't want to read anything, any spoilers. I don't want to ruin it for myself. I want to have free thought and I just want to play the game and see what I actually think of it. Well, as much as I knew about the game was this. It was Resident Evil 4. You play as Leon and it has six chapters, five chapters and the final boss and escape chapter. That's it. I did not know, however, and honestly, I should have known. The chapters have sub chapters. We had just finished the remake of Resident Evil 3. That was about six hours long. So I assumed this game wouldn't be much longer. You know what they say about assuming, right? Well, two and a half hours later, because I'm slow and I search everything, I finally hit chapter one dash two and I did a double take. Long story short, this game can take up to 30 hours. Say what? Now, before anybody jumps on me about complaining over a long game and getting more bang for my buck, it wasn't so much that the fact that the game was long, it was the fact that the game was gonna get more difficult. The chainsaw guy, or if you wanna get technical, his name is Dr. Salvatore, from the first sub chapter had me in such a panic state, I was wondering how hard was this game going to get? We're not going to go through every sub chapter, but trust me, it gets hard. So hard in fact, that I saw the chainsaw guy later in the game and I found him laughable and very much judged my chapter one dash one self. She was so naive. Let's talk graphics, gameplay, story, and music in that order before we go any further. As I mentioned, this game was made in 2005, but I played a remastered version. While it's certainly not comparable to the stunning list of titles available on new gen consoles right now, I was pleasantly surprised by how much that didn't matter to me. It had many areas to explore and kept me intrigued with a massive map and the diversity of each one. I could see how this game won several awards and influenced many open world games we play today. The mechanics and gameplay on the other hand were a bit frustrating. The aiming was a tad stiff and the fact that I couldn't walk and shoot at the same time was unnerving and left me feeling vulnerable. But you get over it. This might sound weird to some people but I honestly don't know where my buttons are. 
If one of the Ganados put a gun to my head and told me to push square or I'd die, I figure I'd have about a 50-50 chance. I play by feel, so eventually I adapt it. I would still get a little mad when I couldn't run away mowing down enemies while raining empty bullet casings, but yeah, it is what it is. Story and music, the two factors that can arguably make or break a game, and if I can add voice acting in with music, then it becomes a trifecta. With that said, this game hits all three. Story-wise, the game develops the entire time right through to the end. We learn that the villagers, Ganados, which translates into herd, mob, cattle, appropriate, have been infected with Las Plagas, a mind-controlling parasite, and throughout the game as we move through the map, we find different variations and mutations of humans and creatures alike. We even run into a familiar face or two from Leon's past that adds depth to the storyline, not to mention Ashley is being constantly rescued and kidnapped, keeping the momentum going. We even get to play as Ashley for a bit, and since she is woefully unarmed, you have to switch gears pretty quickly to survive. These two added so much to the creepy ambiance, and nothing is more terrifying than the first time you hear the bone-chilling chanting of the Castle Ganados or Monks. I remember just standing there, not moving, wondering what direction the chants were coming from. Even moving forward, there's no guarantee enemies won't attack from behind. So, there's that. I think it's easier to talk about the games in terms of the areas of the map, and luckily there's only three. The village, the castle, and the island. At first, you can expect to run into a lot of Ganados, men and women both unarmed and with a multitude of different weapons. If you're lucky enough to run into a Ganado with no weaponry, you can conserve ammo and use hand-to-hand -hand combat. In contrast, Ganados carrying explosives might be a little harder to take down this way for obvious reasons. For the most part, the village is not a really difficult area of the map. That's not to say it's not challenging, but in comparison to the enemies you'll meet in the island and the castle, there's a big difference. The village spans the entire first two chapters of the game, and I just want to go over some key points and highlights, as well as some bigger enemies and some boss fights. The first thing I was pretty happy I did was free the dog right near the start. He definitely comes in handy a little later in the game, and take note of the bear traps, as you'll see those nasty things pop up a little later in the game too. Since I already covered the chainsaw guy, we will skip ahead and talk about something a little lighter, a friendly face in the crowd. You are about to meet your first of very few comrades in the game. Lewis Sadler is a biologist with a swagger of a pimp who dresses like a cross between a pirate and a desperado. The first time you meet Sarah, he is bound and gagged in a closet. And I can kind of understand why. You even get to fight alongside of him via AI, which almost feels like you're not completely on your own for the entire game. The game, while not super puzzle heavy, does have some, so I guess we should talk about that next. Some puzzles are harder than others. Some require finding pieces to make a whole, others require combinations, and still others require doing certain things in a specific order. Whichever one you are faced with, I didn't find them overwhelming, but they definitely added to the game. Now, while I didn't complete every extra puzzle that I'm sure would have helped me out in the game, I did shoot down all the targets hanging around the farm part of the village, which gave me a handsome reward from the merchant. And speaking of, the first time I saw this guy lurking around the corner, I had no idea what to do. I nearly shot and killed him, but since he wasn't instinctively trying to kill me, I thought I should pay him the courtesy of a quick conversation before I blew his head off, which I unfortunately did do shortly thereafter while trying to defeat a couple Ganados. Oops. Don't be fooled by this fella though, he's not all good. There are certain special items you'll pick up along the way that will sell for a much higher price tag, if in a completed state. It's not like the merchant's going to tell you to hang on to it until then. He sells guns and health potions from under his trench coat. That doesn't exactly scream honest businessman to me. I should also talk about the sprint events that I swear caused more deaths for me than any boss or gaggle of Ganados did put together. If I wasn't getting crushed by a rock, I was being run over by a truck. Also, I was shocked the first time a snake leapt out of a box. For the first few areas of the village, I would knife these things with reckless abandon and await my prize. The first time a snake bit me, I jumped, and every time I had to break a box thereafter, I was a little distrusting. However, if you kill a snake, you get an egg, and that helps recoup a little bit of health. The first big boss you'll meet is Del Lagos, meaning from the lake, which is spot on since he's a giant sea creature. I didn't find this boss too hard. 
You need to spear him several times and avoid obstacles so that you don't get knocked off the boat and potentially eaten by this deviant deep water creature. This happened at the end of chapter one, and I figured I had a little bit before the game threw me into my next boss battle, but that happened just afterwards in chapter 2-1. El Gigante, no translation needed, just requires a lot of firepower to defeat. Remember the dog we rescued at the start? Remember I said he'd be back? Well, he is back to help you distract the beast, which will really help in taking him down. He's not overly fast or attack heavy compared to other bosses, and if you stay far away for the most part unless prompted and in constant motion, it's really easy to defeat him without any damage. I mean, I took damage, but I could easily see how it could be completed without taking any damage. Another pretty big deal in this subchapter is that you will finally meet up with Ashley in the church and rescue her for the first time of many times. Something interesting about Ashley's character is that you will have the choice to have her wait here or follow me. And while it might seem to make sense to have her wait for you, if you think things might get hairy, she could just as easily be kidnapped by Los Illuminados. But if you have her follow, she also runs the risk of dying in the crossfire. There are also a few times where you can have her hide or the game will prompt her to hide, which brings me to probably one of my most frustrating and highest death counts in the game. And that's when Leon and Lewis have to try to survive the mob in the cabin at the end of chapter 2-2. You won't beat every enemy. I came to learn that. But the purpose is to survive the encounter until the mob flow mysteriously ends. You run into a few Chainsaw Sisters in the next subchapter and another El Gigante. Your trusted four-legged friend isn't here to help you this time and you must find a key to get out of the gate. It's probably possible to get the key without defeating the beast, but I didn't even hold it as an option and decided to go for the kill instead and then retrieve it. This seems like more than enough tough boss fights for one level, but that doesn't even compare to having to fight Mendez in the barn. When I first saw this abomination, I nearly put the controller down and walked away. As I still had three chapters to complete, as well as the final chapter, I honestly didn't think it was even going to be possible to beat with my skill level. Needless to say, I died a lot during this fight until I figured out how to defeat him. Mendez is a two-stage boss where you first beat the lower half and then once he is cut down, you fight the upper half, which is a little bit more tricky because he moves faster, swinging around on his spider-like limbs. It's certainly not a fight for the faint of heart. Okay guys, I wish I could have gone into more depth about these chapters. It is such an amazing game that there are so many things to see and so many scenarios and cutscenes and bosses and enemies and battles that I just can't cover all of it because you don't want to sit through a two hour video. The next part of the game takes place in the castle. And while it takes place over the course of two chapters like the village, this part of the game is the most in depth, the most challenging and the longest part to beat. The monsters are way harder and more diverse, and for a game released in 2005, the creep factor is turned all the way up to 10. Okay, let's talk about the monks again. I'm quite sure I still hear them chant, Kohello, in my nightmares, which translates into take them. Um, no thanks. You start on the outside grounds of the castle, and the monks are not only everywhere, but they have firepower in the form of catapults. The first time I tried to walk through these, I decided to have Ashley wait here. Bad choice. One of the monks tried to carry her away. As you'd expect, once you make your way through the fire and foes into the castle, the situation isn't much better. You'll fight mobs of castle ganados and a puzzle or two until you come upon a large hulking figure in a cage. You know, for a fleeting moment I thought, if I save this guy and I free him, he will help me in my mission. But unless my mission was to die repeatedly, I was extraordinarily successful at my mission. The only good thing about the Garador is that he is blind. So if you can distract him with sound, he will run towards that instead of towards you with his Wolverine-like claws. There are so many bosses in these two chapters, I barely know where to start. So let's just give a brief description of each and list them off. Spoiler alert, we meet up with Ada Wong again. It's hard to tell if she's actually trying to help because she holds us up at gunpoint. Of course, Ashley's been kidnapped again, but that happens so often, barely even registered. The suit of armor, or six to be exact, when you try to take the king's cup. 
Apparently, the king is not a fan of petty theft, and he has some Las Plagas infected knights to serve as the punishment for that. Vertigo, uh, I think that's how it's pronounced. This thing is what would happen if Alien and Predator had a baby and it grew up to be a giant pain in the ass. It just stalks you the entire time until you kill it, and you also get stuck in a small engine room trying to outrun it until the door reopens. Who wrote this? This is just downright sadistic. But pay attention to the mention of liquid nitrogen. This game is giving you a hint, and you'll need it. Then we have not one El Gigante, but two, because two are always better than one. But if you play your cards right, you can give them both a lava bath at once, which is so satisfying. Next, Ramon Salazar. Boy, was I happy to see this guy put down. This was the first creature I finally used my grenade launcher on. I was terrified that this item was a one-off. I did get one in a glass case in the castle, so I assumed if I used that at best, I would be able to purchase one or perhaps find another. Who knew the merchant would pretty much sell you one every time before a new boss battle, which I will tell you makes the game easier. Not easy, but easier. The biggest problem with this boss was that staying below wasn't a great vantage point, and you had to contend with a lot of enemies even when the monsters you are trying to defeat aren't boss worthy. They still do a great job of sucking the life out of you. Now for some chapter highlights. The crazy maze of dogs. Just when you think there can't be more dogs that want to rip your throat out, there are more dogs. Dogs in cages, dogs on either side, dogs in front, and dogs behind. And I'm not sad to say, but I took them all out. All right, calm down. I know there's a lot of animal lovers in the crowd. And while I love dogs too, I got so much pleasure from taking these guys out. So just calm down because it's just a video game. My free rocket launcher, as I mentioned above, it's true what they say, the best things in life are indeed free. And I can't forget the spiked ceilings that try to kill Leon and Ashley. What good castle defense doesn't have a ceiling of nails? The damn flying insects. So many times throughout the game, well, not all that many times, but way more than I wanted to see them, which was zero. The Minecart Railway Express. I mean, this is not a safe way to travel, and honestly, I may need to write a letter. Not only am I expected to kill Ganados falling from the sky on this ride from hell, but I'm going to have to be quick so that I don't take the final exit to the land down six feet under. And I don't mean Australia. Moving on to chapter five, you are finally outside the castle walls. You can smell the freedom on the horizon, but don't get too excited because there are many more boss battles and enemies left. So after the death of Lewis, I got it. oh wait, did I get, did I forget to mention that Lewis dies? Sadler impales Lewis through the chest with his weird under the robe stabby appendage thing. That sounded way more, that sounded way worse than I, I meant it to sound. Bye bye, old new friend. So after the death of Sarah, it seems like Leon doesn't have a comrade in the world until backup comes in the form of a helicopter. I think it might have been the best time I had during the entire game in terms of feeling like a boss. I felt invincible running around knowing I had a friend in the skies with firepower. We were a power team until my backup inevitably got shot down. Oh yeah, and if you've seen the first Resident Evil movie, you'll likely remember the iconic laser scene Mila Jovovich has to twist and maneuver her body through. But this time, Leon is the Death Beam Acrobat. The Regenerator and Iron Maiden can be mentioned together because one is basically like the other, with the exception that the latter crossbred with a porcupine. The best way to defeat these is the infrared scope so that you can see the parasites in their bodies. Otherwise, you guessed it, they will just regenerate. You can shoot at a leg and slash them with a knife until they die, for the regenerators that is, but because of the metal spikes on the Iron Maidens, the best attack is the first one I mentioned. That leaves just three bosses. Well, four bosses, kind of, but you'll just have to keep watching to see what I mean. Now you come face to face with it. No, not the clown guy, this guy. And best yet, you get to get trapped in a series of cages with him while trying not to die and finding all the buttons and controls to lift the gates before they break away and you find yourself falling to your death. It is another two-stage boss, but besides trying to maneuver my way through the cage maze, 
went out in the open. It took nothing but one solid grenade launcher to send him on his merry way. Jack Krauser, a former special agent turned monster, is another hard boss to beat. The first time you encounter him, you're basically dodging and evading, but don't be fooled. This is not the last you'll see of Krauser. You see him again, and he's extremely deadly. He moves super fast, making it hard to target him, all the while trying to find your way out of the tower and locate all three pieces of the Holy Beast. You know two are hidden in towers, and he has told you the last is on himself. So you're not escaping unless you can take Krauser out once and for all. And now for the actual last boss. And we will get to the other sort of kind of boss in a minute. This takes place in the last chapter or chapter six. I've seen it referred to as both. You tackle your would be hardest challenge yet. I don't know if I just got better as the game progressed, but I didn't find them all that challenging. I died a total of two times, but that's really good for me. Once you know the tricks to beating Saddler, it's not that hard, and because the area is so expansive, if you go into the battle with the right weapons, you can run around and avoid his attacks and take him down without too much trouble. You'll find the Broken Butterfly is indispensable in your crusade to take Saddler down, and wouldn't you know it, Ada is back to add a little support with a special rocket launcher, thus ending Saddler for good. Okay, I know I mentioned one last boss, and it's not quite what you think. I, I just, I have one word and a hyphenated word or two words and one word. Anyways, jet ski. Did anyone have as much trouble as I did just escaping the island? Stupid jet ski is all I have to say. And of course, this last mission is time to make it extra challenging. It's hilarious to think this is the boss that took me down more times than anything else could even come close to. So here we are, cheers, it's the end of the video and you guys are champs if you stuck it out that long. It was a lot of game to talk about. It is a big game and I am proud to say it will be in my top 10 for years to come. It was a great pick. I loved playing it. And honestly, at the end of it, I was so excited I didn't have to play the next day because it was intense. Now being done for a few weeks, I'm kind of missing it. I kind of want some more Resident Evil 4. So Capcom, make that happen. Give us a remake for sure. You said you were going to, so don't disappoint us. And until next time, play all your games. Have as much fun as you can. Don't worry too much about what people think about you playing games. There's always haters out there and you just do you and you have fun. And until next time, game on. <laughs>